Welcome to the 10 day trend. It's the time of year where the tropics can influence our weather and certainly add some difficulties to the longer range forecasts. We'll see more about that in a moment because first of all, the weather looks fairly straightforward, a standard but fairly angry looking jet stream plowing across the Atlantic. Certainly pretty lively for the time of year. That is going to bring most of us some rain during Thursday and Thursday night from these weather systems that it's pushing along. But notice how it does kind of weaken quite a bit as it moves in towards the UK. And then interestingly, it kind of splits. We have two jet streams almost as we go into the weekend. But before we talk about that and uh, tropical system Ernesto, which is lurking behind me, we'll uh, focus in on the shorter term because as these weather systems come in, they will bring some rain and also introduce a change in temperature. As this one comes in, bringing wet conditions across the north on Thursday, it will introduce quite warm and humid air for a time before this cold front moves southwards and that will introduce something a little bit fresher. We can put the temperatures on and show that quite nicely. There's the warmer air returning to the south temporarily through Thursday and Thursday night, but then the, the cold front moves through and cooler, fresher air arrives for most of us on Friday and into the weekend. Although there is a bit of a question mark about how quickly that warmer air clears away from East Anglia and the southeast. But here's how the weather front manifests itself in terms of our weather. Quite a wet day across the north on Thursday and that rain trickling southwards. Much of East Anglia and southern England dry until uh, the overnight period. And then that rain should be moving through on that weather front. I say should because, as I said, there is a bit of a question mark about the timing of that weather front clearing through and taking away the warm and humid air because it could just be that it's a little further back. The warmth and humidity could still spark one or two showers on Friday across East Anglia and the southeast. And that's showing up here quite nicely on uh, what we call the postage stamps. These are the ensemble forecasts when you run the computer model not just once but many times and each one of these different members as they're known or different stamps um, showing a potential scenario for Friday and where the rainfall is. Most of them, I know you can't really see the detail here, most of them are showing it's going to be dry on Friday, but a few highlighted in the red boxes here are showing just the potential for some heavy showers across East Anglia and the southeast during Friday. And then there's a bit of a question mark about Saturday as well. Again, this is the ensemble, the, the postage stamps uh, for uh, Saturday now showing the rainfall. And again, most of them are showing that it's dry, but there are just a small number that actually have that weather front just pushing back from the near continent across the southeast, potentially bringing a little more rain here. But that's just a small chance at this stage because there's only a few of the ensemble members showing it. The most likely scenario is that actually most places have a fine weekend. There are these weather fronts close to the far north of Scotland, uh, bringing at times some gusty winds and a little bit of rain. But for most of us, we've got a weak ridge of high pressure bringing for many a fine couple of days on Saturday and Sunday. And the fresher air means temperatures will feel pleasant in the sunshine, generally high teens across the north, low 20s across the south. And then we have these next weather systems coming in for Monday and uh, they're being pushed along by what we saw earlier. That's a split in the jet stream, one coming down from the Arctic, another one coming up from the south. Still at this stage, Ernesto churning away out in the Western Atlantic. We're not talking about that yet, but the split jet stream is quite interesting, likely to generate an area of low pressure in the mid Atlantic. Now, when we talk about jet streams, particularly these, the pinky colours here, the jet streaks where it gets really quite strong, we talk about entrances and exits to jet streams. We talk about left and right entrances, with this being the, the right entrance here and the, this being the, the left entrance. And then over here where the, the, the winds are actually slightly decelerating and we, we lose some strength in the jet stream. Again, here you've got a, 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 an exit and you've got a left and a right side. And the areas where low pressures generate, generally down the right entrance or the left exit, as is happening here with this northernmost jet stream. And in the right entrance to the southernmost jet stream, just look what happens here. The, the pressure pattern pretty slack initially, but we actually start to see a low pressure spinning up 
as we go through the weekend out in the Atlantic. And it's that one, but also combined with this tangle of weather fronts associated with the northern jet stream that combined to bring us cloud and outbreaks of rain as we head into Monday. Now, with such a lot going on in the Atlantic, quite a complex situation with that split jet stream and the developing low, there's actually quite a bit of uh, agreement from the computer models that we will see cloud and rain spilling in across the country from the west during Monday. It might not look exactly like this, but um, pretty good agreement that we will see a spell of cloud and rain returning uh, across the UK on Monday after, for most of us, what will be a fine weekend with uh, some decent spells of sunshine and bar the odd shower, most places dry. What happens after that? Well, now we can finally start talking about uh, Nesto. At time of recording, still uh, a tropical storm, but expected to become a hurricane later on Wednesday afternoon and into the evening. Currently clearing away from Puerto Rico and heading its way northwards out into open waters for Thursday and Friday, but potentially affecting Bermuda on Friday night and into the weekend, then tracking its way northwards. Still as a reasonably active system at this stage, uh, just off the coast of Canada. This is the forecast for Monday. Notice how it's been a long way from the jet stream, but as it then tracks further northwards, well, it may well start to interact with the jet stream as we head into next week. And that's what often happens with these tropical systems at this time of year. And that's where things can get complicated. This map shows it quite nicely, actually. So this is the um, ECMWF Dalmatian plot showing where Ernesto is likely to be. The blue outline is the is the um, outline of Canada there, the Canadian coastline. And the lines are showing the, the pressure pattern from the main computer model run or the deterministic model run. But each black dot is an ensemble member, a different run of the computer model. But you can see they're all pretty much agreeing that the position of Ernesto is going to be just somewhere off the coast of Canada. And that's quite good agreement, quite good clustering. All those black dots are pretty close together, considering this is still five days ahead. So quite good agreement that um, by this stage, Ernesto, or what's left of Ernesto, will be just off the west coast of Canada. But if we fast forward, you can see that that um, clustering does disappear. This is the same map, but I've just broadened it out. Now you can see the UK over here and the clustering of the low pressure system that's going to bring us some rain on Monday. And again, quite closely clustered here. But there's that system we've just seen off the coast of Canada. Fast forward to Wednesday and, well, the dots kind of just become splayed out all over the place. The deterministic, the main model run, still has a system here. It won't be a hurricane by this stage, but it'll have gone extra tropical, but still as an area of low pressure in here. But all the dots are way more spaced out now, and that's because it's been interacting with the jet stream. So the uncertainty, there's a lot of energy within this system when it interacts with the jet stream. It just could go a number of ways. It's likely to be heading across the Atlantic, yes, but it could be being pushed further north up towards Greenland, or it could just kind of dip down to the south and head down towards the mid-Atlantic, maybe down to the Azores. Most likely scenario is for it to be heading up somewhere between the UK and Iceland. That is the most likely scenario, but as you can see from that, there's quite a big jump just zoom in and show you closer here. There's, there's not a lot of agreement, not a lot of clustering of those dots around where the deterministic model is. So there's a fair bit of uncertainty. That's typical because you've got that energy. It's a tropical system interacting with a jet stream. And it's also a week away. So this is for next Wednesday. So there's uh, always going to be quite a bit of uncertainty, quite a bit of spread in the possibilities. But Dan Holly who's a deputy chief meteorologist today, has been looking at this in much more detail and looking at the ensemble forecasts and coming up with the potential different scenarios. There's three most likely scenarios, with the most likely of all being that the, the low heads up somewhere between the UK and Iceland. 
Again, it won't be a hurricane at this stage. It'll have transitioned in some way or another, but it could still contain some pretty warm air as it heads its way northward. So it could bring some warmth to the UK. And the closer you are to the low, uh, that's likely to bring some wet and windy weather. The further you are away from it, so further south and east, it's likely to be drier and warmer. But there are a couple of other scenarios, less likely scenarios, but they could happen that the low actually gets pushed way up much closer to Greenland, maybe between Greenland and Iceland. And that may allow us to tap into some warmer air further south. So that's a scenario where we could see temperatures rise a little bit as we go through next week. But that's an unlikely scenario. I say the more likely one was the one we saw earlier. Another possibility is that um, the low, the remnants of Ernesto don't really get uh, pushed up too far, mainly stay to the south of the jet stream and just kind of fizzles out and dips out towards the mid-Atlantic. And that would leave us with a fairly typical weather pattern. We'd see some uh, wet and windy weather coming in again from the Atlantic to the north and the west, drier and brighter further south and east, but that's not really involving uh, the remnants of Ernesto. So interesting to see what happens as we go through next week. Either way, the most likely scenario is it stays wet and wettest and windiest to the north and west and driest and brightest further south and east. And that's what this is showing. This is uh, the ECMWF again, the ensembles, but now we're looking at the probability of seeing 10 millimeters of rain or more. And right throughout next week, the maps are pretty similar for every day, showing the highest probability of 10 millimeters of rain across western parts of Scotland and the probability of seeing that much rain in a day further south and east pretty low. Again, it's just suggesting that weather pattern is always coming in from the Atlantic with the wettest weather to the north and the west, the driest weather further south and east. And the most likely pressure set up, the stacked probabilities also reflecting that. Going through the dates through next week with the darker blue colours here showing positive NAO, which basically means westerly winds and the wettest weather to the north and west, driest further south and east. And that's the most likely this dark blue shading, uh, even well into next week, around or above 50%. And the next most likely scenario, pressure set up with that, that paler blue, also has the winds coming in from the west, just a bit more from the southwest, so perhaps a little bit warmer, but generally a similar kind of weather pattern. So that's the most likely setup as we go through next week and even beyond and into the weekend, which is for many of us a bank holiday weekend. So plenty going on next week. Do keep up to date with the forecast. Best way to do that, of course, is to follow us on social media. If you're watching this on YouTube, do hit subscribe.